What is going on guys? Today I have a very special video. I have a very special guest with me and that is Moxie Boosted aka Marcos. Marcos, why don't you say a little uh, little hello? Hey guys, uh, I I do things on the internet. <laughs> And we're going to talk about that. Uh, this is actually a surprise intervention. I don't know if I told you in the DMs before, but um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about your content, if that's okay, and uh, uh -oh. <laughs> how, what we could <laughs> what we could do to improve it. Um, so uh, Marcos runs Moxie Boosted, which is a YouTube channel that's heavily influenced. Well, not heavily influenced, but heavily focused on VGC. Would you say that's that's fair to say? Yeah, I, I'm mostly VGC. I like to talk about general Pokemon stuff, but it's it's my general audience is VGC players. I must have to say, one of my favorite videos of yours to watch over and over again is the uh, is it top five uh, worst gimmicks in VGC? Yeah, I yeah, I, I always complain because like the online ladder is best of one, and I hate facing gimmicks. It's like if you know the gimmicks, you can beat them. But I figured I might as well take a video and talk about gimmicks that I personally don't like facing. Yeah, dude, that's such a good video. I like the scrolling across the screen, haze, uh, <laughs> haze, what is it, uh, haze, defog. I, I paused it so many times, and I was like, oh, God, I had to keep going back. I tried watching it in slow-mo, and I was like, what is this? Simple yeah, little messages make people better Yeah, players. yeah, it made me want to join the army and fight for Uncle Sam all over again. Um, <laughs> so when, like, when did you decide to, to start doing your channel? Uh, well, it was 2015, I think, maybe 2014, I can't remember, and uh, my girlfriend broke up with me and I needed a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so from the ashes, you arose, moxie boosted. Actually, uh, my original name on YouTube was The Head Honch Crow, and then when I found out that was a tongue twister and apparently a pun that a certain shofu already used. Are you uh, serious? Like, yeah, I, I made that before I learned what Pokemon Cypher was. And then uh, I found that out, and when Sun and Moon came out and my channel started growing a bit, I said, all right, well, I guess now's the time to change it now that a lot of people are coming in. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. I've had my own interactions with Shofu before. We're not going to talk about it, but it, uh -oh. I guess his brother thought that I was someone that I wasn't, and we went back and forth on Twitter, and then Shofu was like, I do not condone this behavior. I, everything you're doing is fine. Carry on. And then his brother was like, my bad, and I still to this day. Well, there was a period of time where, I don't know if you've ever done this, but there, there was a period of time where... Uh, like everyone was just showing up for my Verlissify videos and no one really cared about my core content that I would make that was like way more frequent and I cared way more about. And so yeah, I made the drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made these two super duper clickbaity like drama alert type videos titled Pokemon Community News. And I didn't, mm -hmm. I had had this conversation on Twitch uh, on stream before that I'm gonna make these videos and I'm not gonna explain them they're just gonna be really like McDonald's-y type drama alert you know scarce and uh, and see how many views they get and sure enough they got a ton of views and like Duncan was in the comments like are you trying to be the Pokemon version of scarce no one wants that and like all these people are like wow you're just feeding off the drama and like I didn't say anything but I was like yes exactly yeah like I I don't know I kind of raged out and and did it to prove a point have you ever have you ever made videos like that where you're just uh, like I I have actually uh well, the first time I actually commented on Pokemon drama was uh in a meme I posted this like 30 second video it was when um what was that one song it's like I am the one that you know. That's oh right, but, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was ultimate. Back, yeah, ultimate by um, his name Denzel like Curry. Him. Come on, yeah, man. Curry. Anyways, I was gonna say you know? Washington, but <laughs> basically it was, by Forrest um, Whitaker, that yeah, rap so, song that yeah, yeah. So Verlis had started this hashtag called hashtag Stand with Verlis. Yes. And on Twitter, people were like, I stand with Verlis for this and this and this. And I was like, wow, these are kind of lame. And then I got into the good ones. I got into the really good ones where it was people using it ironically. Yeah, and, sure. And um, basically what I did is I played the song and it's like, you know, right before the beat drops yeah. and the chorus goes in, it's all the positive comments. Yeah. And then as soon as it's like, I am the one, it's bass yeah. boosted. And it's all of these ironic comments, and I finish it off with my <laughs> with my own tweet that was like, "I stand with Verlis because even Hitler had supporters." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
You know, I I eventually just got so tired of that and went back and deleted those videos. And they, I mean, they got a lot of views. I have one where he came in to my live stream and we argued for about two hours. And mm -hmm. I had a ton of that going on. And I just, I honestly got tired of it, not because of the content, but because I would make new videos and I would get a, I, I read all of my comments on my videos and I have notifications on on my phone. And uh, yeah. I would get notifications, and it would be about like these year old Verlicify videos. And I'm like, come on, man, I just put out a funny little video. Like, geez. Yeah, I, I still I still get some for my older ones. I don't, I like, yeah. I like to stay away from drama, but if something controversial yeah. is going on, I like to throw in my two cents. Um, yeah. But I make it pretty clear, like, hey, this isn't what my channel's about. I'm just, right. I, I am a person that talks about Pokemon, and this somewhat has to do with the community. Yeah. Um, but like, I think the last time I even talked about it was uh, when I was getting really frustrated with the clickbait that was going on. And I'm like, oh, right, let's sure. just make a video explaining why for this sure. is happening because That's a, lot the, uh, a lot of people don't realize the ecosystem of YouTube, especially right. the Pokemon community, right. uh, revolves heavily around new games being just around the corner every time. Yeah, around stuff constantly happening, and then when you are, f uh, I think you're very fortunate because you cover a competitive format. And I think oh, yeah. that stuff's always happening and a lot of it's positive. Exactly. Exactly. But if it's uh Pokemon in general, if it's like a news thing, if there's no uh you know, it's it's there's nothing going on, then you gotta if that's your livelihood, then you have to make something going on, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that that it sort of breeds that that <sighs> the mindset. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It breeds that mindset of now anything is okay. Now we can uh now we can just make anything like yeah uh, it's yeah. like it's like in the non-competitive pokemon community uh where it's just talking about the you know the new games and news uh right. people that cover news the thing that was like going on uh, two th two things are going on at the same time right uh in the competitive well i'll start with the casual community in the casual community it's like Verlus and a driver fighting guys watch and in the yeah. competitive community it was like Dude, a Lorantis just won a regional. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so it's like such a stark contrast. And you have like, oh, the the Pokemon community is so toxic, and oh, we need to fix it. And everything that it like everything that happens is pushing us towards the edge of Armageddon. And then yeah. you know, in the competitive scene, it's people on you know Nugget Bridge or Trainer Tower or people helping each other out, even with the release of. You know stuff that's as casual as Pokemon Quest. People are like, "Hey, how do you do this?" Oh, thanks, yeah. bud. Like, is there a tier list? Or, oh, okay, cool. Like, and I know in my own Discord, especially the people who are really into competitive, they're super duper helpful to each other. And it's not. I don't think there's ever been any hint of drama. Like, I, I don't know. There's yeah. There's drama once in a while, but it's it's usually something that kind of matters. Like a while back, there was this tournament. Uh, being hosted online to help Italian players get to an international. I can't remember right. what kind of tournament it was. Right. And apparently one of the players was ghosting. And people in the community, rather than actually like getting up in arms about it, like the Italian players are kind of up in arms with each other. But yeah. everyone else, instead of like actually just, you know, we said basically, all right, we'll let them figure this out, but we're still going to make memes about it. So for the next two weeks, every, <laughs> Mimic U and, every Mimic U and VGC was named Italy. <laughs> Because just Italian ghosts. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. I Personally, I just posted a that. picture of Luigi's mansion and left it at that. <laughs> That's the most Italian ghost I've ever seen. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about VGC. Uh, so what got you into uh, sort of competitive VGC? Or I mean, let's not even go to competitive VGC. What got you into VGC format? Uh, period. Well, actually. Uh, Ironically enough, and I found this to be the truth with a lot of people in the community, they start out by looking up, um, well, you know, let me start somewhere else. My first exposure to competitive Pokemon in general was when I was just, you know, messing around on the internet and I was like, I wonder what things there are world championships for. First thing I yeah. looked up, of course, was world championship arm wrestling. Uh, that, that stuff's intense, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, very similar to Pokemon up, as well. Yeah. <laughs> next thing I looked up was something a little more ridiculous. I'm like, world championship nerf. I wonder if this is a thing. And apparently it is, and it's really awkward. <laughs> but, it doesn't, it, but that isn't nearly as awkward as world championship Beyblade. <laughs> what? 
I know. I just look it up. I think the last video was in 2014. Are but, you? That's recent. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I don't understand how you have any skill in Beyblade. You're just throwing tops. Hey, hey, you know. easy, easy, easy. Oh, I'll, I'll I apologize. Okay, I let someone in. <laughs> I apologize to all of my uh, my Beyblade fans. Uh, for what Marcos just said, don't hold it against him. He doesn't know what he's saying. Beyblade is a real sport, and uh, it requires a lot of skill. Don't listen to Moxie Boosted, okay? We'll just let him. We'll let Marcos stick to VGC and let the Beybladers, you know, stick to their training. And I'm back. I'd let someone in who had groceries. <laughs> hey, that's fine, man. I'm sure uh, that could be cut out. <laughs> I was, well, I'm not going to cut it out because I had a monologue about how anti Beyblade you were, and uh, <laughs> I'm leaving that in there. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I, anyways, uh, after the Beyblade <laughs> thing, I was like, all right, let's look up something that I'm actually kind of interested in. I looked up World Championship Pokemon. Yeah. And that took me to like the Black and White Championship. I think there was a Cobbler yeah. on the field, and I'm like, this is cool. Okay. Yeah. And I actually looked into it. I hadn't played Pokemon in many years because I never got a DS. And, um, the next Christmas, uh, I actually got a Nintendo 3DS, or yeah, 3DS that was used, but okay. uh, it came with Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, started playing with it, <laughs> and oddly enough, the last game that I played that was a Pokemon game was Ruby and Sapphire, so it was familiar. Wow. And, uh, and I found this to be the truth of most people. The first exposure that I had to competitive guides was with Verlicify, ironically enough. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he he tried you know th those were videos where he actually put in some effort and uh, right. i was subscribed to him for a while and that was kind of how i got into it vgc specifically i got into because i just started looking up more world championship stuff yeah i remember uh i think i i initially got into uh actually competitively playing pokemon like not uh in terms of like regionals or anything like that but playing against other people i think in black 2 white 2 and I had my little action replay, and I would just, I didn't know anything about EVs or IVs or anything. I would just uh, uh, gen a bunch of protein, zinc, and carbos, and iron, and stuff, and max those out, and get like a Tyranitar, Excadrill, and Garchomp, and like the strongest Pokemon I could think of, and lose every time, because I didn't know what I was doing, and then... I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing, uh, dude, I remember Shady Penguin back in the day when he would use Dragon Dance Crawdaunt and he oh, was, yeah, he was, yeah, Claudia. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. That. And, uh, he would, he was just then learning, you know, sort of, uh, I, it's weird to say competitive, but I guess it is. I mean, it's against other people, but sort of competitive formats. And then seeing him actually like on the stage, I was like, dude, he's like, he did it. He like he came so far. Like there he is, right there. Yeah, it was crazy. I think I think I saw him. Like someone posted the vod from Twitch. It was like him at the first regional. It was at Dallas Regionals in 2017. That's so nuts. That's so Bulu nuts. Team. Yeah, and I remember. Uh, let's see who else was there. Magnitude and uh, Magnitude Shady and that whole crew uh steve and all of them that would it's sort of that little click of people that were generally the same sort of content i remember on a live stream i uh i was calling shady magnitude for like about an hour and i didn't even realize it and like looking back i was such a dork but those are the days of like x and y and that was the first time that i i got into the competitive sort of for real for real when I found out like I would watch the Verlicify guides on EV training and stuff like that and IVs and and mm -hmm. breeding and stuff and there was that I say this all the time I sound like an old uh, Vietnam veteran but I remember I was top 1500 in that first international challenge for X and Y the first thing that they did where it's like an online tournament you don't have and you actually i don't know if you got championship points for it or yeah you, you do yeah it's like uh top 1500 you get like at least one point yeah 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 and i remember that feeling i was like oh my gosh like i could do this <laughs> <laughs> i could do this for a living like <laughs> i got i was so proud of myself getting i i grinded so hard and i would like train on showdown like i took it so seriously i never did anything with it but uh i think that was the first time i was actually introduced to for real for real competitive playing 
Mm-hmm. Um, man, X and Y was such good memories. But like, okay, so so do you remember the first sort of tournament or first time where you sort of knuckled down and took it seriously? Uh, let me think. I think the first time I actually did some serious, serious team, bu- er, team building because I wanted to be successful at a tournament uh, was actually in 2017, as recent as that. Wow. I, I like I really just got on on a grind and started doing a lot of VGC stuff after that. Yeah. Um, I my channel was mixed between VGC and singles content, and then yeah, I pretty much did a hard shift to VGC after um, I went to this mid season showdown in Chicago, where it was it was late into the the 2017 format because yeah. it, it was summer, and it, there had been sort of an established meta, but 2017 was known for having weird things be viable. Yeah, and yeah, I said I wanted to use Galispod because Galispod is my second favorite Pokemon, and uh, I brought this really weird set. It was a Tailwind set that I had been working on for a while. Um, it was like max attack with just enough speed to outspeed Garchomp under Tailwind, but with a lot of bulk and a Psychic Seed because it's meant to come in at the end. The entire yeah. team was like um, really awkward but really functional. It was Tapu Lele, Gar- uh, Tapu Lele, Choice Scarf, Garchomp, Assault Vest, Kartana. Fly, or Fire EMZ, um, Talonflame, a Galissapod, and just a super, super bulky, bold, max HP, max defense, follow me, Cosmic Power, Clefable. Wow, and dear God. What, yeah, when it was unaware, essentially, I had a lot of trouble with Mimilax with that team, and I'm like, yeah. all right, what beats Mimilax? Something that doesn't care about Belly Drum, and I just used that. And I didn't face any Mimilax, but there is a video of me on YouTube uh, facing Colin Hire, who is a multiple worlds competitor, and I to owed him on stream with um, nice Cle- <laughs> with Clefable and stuff. Uh, and after that, I, I had top cut my first tournament, and I was like, this is really cool. I really want to play this. I met uh, Eshi VGC, who's uh, the 2016 Madison Regional Champion. Wow. And she and I are kind of buddy-buddy now. We talk about Pokemon, and we mess around at tournaments. Just kind of, nice. We, we kind of we talk smack a lot, but we're, we're friends. Yeah, for um, sure. And like after that, I'm like, wow, this community is really fun. I just want to you know, go all into the community and then I just shifted completely over to VGC. That's awesome. So what what would you say is your favorite thing about the VGC community? Or do you have a favorite thing? Is it all good? Oh, yeah. I mean like it's all it not everything's good of course. Uh TCPI is sometimes kind of um they they sort of nerfed local events like PCs the smallest ones to the point where right. they're insignificant. Right. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that uh, cuz grassroots communities don't really get as much of a a fair shot of earning cp but i would say my favorite part is just uh the people a lot of people in the community as toxic as some of them can be uh the vast majority of them are just super open to uh helping each other out team building with each other and although there are some clicks with higher uh skill uh successful players they will still talk to the smaller players give them pointers and just be generally really nice people yeah it's a lot. It reminds me. Hearing you talk about it, it kind of reminds me of the current Pokin community. Uh, it's real easy to just DM, not DM pros, but like tweet at them, and they'll they'll respond almost immediately. I, I kind of, I I really like that aspect, um, especially since it's such a, uh, it's so competitive. Is so weird to me because you see that like uh, I'm sure you hear this all the time, but you know it, it seems like that top six the big six you see all the time Mm -hmm. and they're so similar but they're so different and everyone's trying to beat everyone with what seems like the same pokemon but it's so i don't know man it's so interesting i wasn't a fan of the metagames where it was super centralized like 2015 2016 are some of my least favorite formats i i really dislike 2016 but as of recent tcpi has what was 2016? Was 2016 uh, Mega Kang Amoongus? No, no, that was that was 2015. 2016 okay, yeah. was, uh, it was Xerneas, Groudon, Landorus. Yeah, the oh, okay, yeah. Where, where everything yeah. was pretty much the same. But yeah. luckily enough, my favorite VGC player of all time, Wolf Click, just kind of came out on top. He's like, hey, I'm going to use Raichu, Hitmontop, Mega Rayquaza. And at yeah. the beginning of the format, everyone's like, dude, Mega Rayquaza sucks. And yes. Wolf just came out and was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, dude. I oh my gosh. I don't know. I, that's your least favorite format? I would say that's my I, most favorite format, dude. It Mega Rayquaza? It was fun for a minute, and then when you realize that you can't beat 
things that are just straight up Groudon, Xerneas, yeah. Smeargle. Oh my god, Dark Void Smeargle with Moody was yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, Gravity, Precipice Blades. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I it remember, was just really annoying. <laughs> I remember using this Crobat Gengar lead, or this Crobat Gengar core that was with Groudon, and I can't remember for the life of me what else. Oh, but was that, it like a Quick Guard Tailwind? Uh, I think so. Yeah, with Quick Guard uh, was really, really important. That's uh, that season. Super Fang, and so the idea is your Crobat is faster than your Gengar, so you Super Fang something, and then you take it out with Gengar, and the Gengar is just bulky enough to survive probably about two hits, two and a half mm -hmm. hits from something weak, and you set up Tailwind, you set up Taunt, and everything like that. I can't remember what else was on the team, but yeah. Dude, I have been, speaking of teams, I know we're getting kind of off track, but uh, speaking of teams, I have been using your teams on your videos, so I want to let you know, dude, you put out some pretty good content. If you guys haven't seen his uh, team building videos or wherever he just like makes a Pokemon from scratch and and, and uh, builds around it, you should definitely check it out. His Kamoa videos are really good. Uh, this is weird because I'm you're the only other person here and I'm saying his uh, <laughs> um, Your Kamoa video is really good. I really like the sort of Kamoa saga um, Dude, oh, yeah, I just yeah, I, I've been following Kamoa for the entire yeah. season. I'm like there's no way this is gonna be good Oh Dude, my god, yeah. it's good. Oh, yeah, god, please nerf it. Please get yeah. it out. <laughs> it's a good series It's like a it's like a uh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that. It's, it's um, like a side story within the other It videos. is right. It's like yeah, there's lore. There's lore behind it um so uh what else uh let's talk about i want to talk about some kind of non-vgc related things and then we'll get into uh i know that you hosted a tournament recently and we'll talk about that for a little bit do you have like a favorite uh like a favorite pokemon game outside of just obvious you know playing vgc and getting good at that i have all right so the game that i dumped the most hours to in my entire life is Pokemon Emerald, and I have owned several copies Same. of that game. Yeah, and all of them, my cousins have stolen from me, <laughs> and I have, and because of that, I played through the game way too many times to remember. Yeah. Uh, and I have Pokemon Ruby at the moment that I have probably a couple hundred hours in. Yeah, <laughs> and for sure. I, I'll just I'll mess around in that old game because it's just super nostalgic, and I wasn't exactly the most social person as a child. <laughs> I mean, it's such it's such a great game. I don't know why I spent so much time on Emerald, but it's just a lot of side quests. Like it's yeah. one of the few Pokemon games where it's like you do these side quests and you actually get stuff out of it, like a yeah. Shoal Cave where you get the the salt and the yeah the stuff to get the Shell Bell. You get the Regis. Uh, you can get the other legendaries in Emerald, like the um the Kyogre and Groudon after you beat the game. Yeah. I didn't know about that until like a year after I'd beaten it when I Dude, finally the, learned how to use the internet. The the Reggie Trio scavenger hunt where Those it was like a really cool an actual mystery and you have to like read the unknown alphabet and like decipher and like national treasure the Reggies out of hiding like oh my gosh. <laughs> We have to, so cool. We have to run a traffic light, hold up the Declaration of Independence, yeah. and the camera catches it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And they tr uh, triangulate our coordinates back to uh, over by the Safari Zone, and then only while it's raining, while the water level on the Shoal Cave is down, and then you have a cast form in front of your party, and then a wingle in the end. Oh, my God. It's a, like stuff. I love stuff like that. It's so cool. Um, I think for me, though... Uh, Dude, I don't know. I would have to say, uh, I would have to say, Stadium, Stadium, and Stadium Two, mostly because I... <laughs> I don't think there's been, there's not been before or since where you can like slam Blue in there, play through Red and Blue, beat the game, beat Stadium with the Pokemon that you just used in Red and Blue, and then complete your Pokedex from the rewards from Stadium, and then do the. Uh, like the round two and face Mewtwo and stuff like that. I, oh my God, I would, I've said this before on stream, but I would, uh, we would have like sort of video game marathons before video game marathons were a thing. Uh, back when I was in high school <clears throat> with my friend Andy and we would call him a Nintendo off. And basically it was just for pride, you know, for cool points. 
uh, yeah. who could play video games the longest. And so I would start with red and then move to blue, then Pokemon Stadium. And like I, I, w- I would easily get like 36 consecutive hours just because there's so much to do. I think that would probably be my, my favorite set. I don't know. What were you going to say? I, I love Stadium 2, but I can't play Stadium 1 just because the broken freeze mechanics. I played that with... It was Dude, after come I had started, on! No, no, it was after I had started playing competitive Pokemon, and my buddy my buddy Josh was like, wait, so you, you play Pokemon competitively, right? I'm like, yeah, and he's like, so do you want to play Stadium? I bet you I can beat you. I'm like, I mean, it's a different game, kind of, considering the mechanics changed, but I guess. Yeah. And we played it, and he froze me with Articuno. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I can't get yeah, out of there. <laughs> for sure. And rap, paralysis, and yeah. critical hits on Slash, and everything like that. Dear God. I'm like, I can't handle any of that. Do you watch uh, False Swipe Gaming at all? Hell yeah, I watch False Swipe Gaming, dude. Yeah. I, I have been meaning to support them on Patreon for months, and I just never remember when I get paid. I'm like, I should probably support them on Patreon. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. Yeah, shout outs to False Swipe Gaming. Uh, great channel, great content. And I, I, I always wonder, every time he goes all the way back to, like, the dawn of time, uh, how where he gets his research information from. But I guess that's, you know... He's got Trade. a team of writers, apparently. Ancient Chinese secret. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. I, I do see that on the credits, too. Yeah, he does. Well, never mind, I guess. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about your website, dude. Go Tell, tell me all about it. Uh, so basically, uh, what happened is the VGC community was complaining on Twitter uh, that Twitter isn't exactly the best forum for VGC. People, even though it, it, it works, uh, you end up getting all the VGC stuff mixed up with drama general twitter nonsense right uh, and people there's no moderation on twitter besides twitter as a whole yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, people can be really really rude to each other and just generally be jerks and i a lot of people were like hey let's make a subreddit or go back to nugget bridge or not nugget bridge but trainer tower and trainer yeah. towers layout was really really it's not too intuitive. The, it's weird, right? It's weird. Yeah, posts, I, I knew I wasn't on the only top, one. Yeah. The posts on top are the oldest posts, That's... Uh, which is kind of awkward. So you have to scroll all the way down to go to newest posts, or you have to, every time you open the page, set it to be newest post first. So, and someone said, let's make a subreddit. And I don't really like the format of subreddits because regardless of what you do, you're just stuck making Reddit posts. It isn't right. exactly like a forum forum. Right. So I said, all right, well, Let's take a day, a day or two actually, and I'll spend that. I'll try to make a website. And I went to Wix. I already had a domain name, so I had like premium stuff. Uh, the only thing I have to pay for is the hosting. And I took a lot of time out of my days, and I made this website where you can make forum posts, share teams. It's just a whole bunch of different pages. I host tournaments on there and stuff. And it's just a really intuitive website, uh, very simple at the same time. Uh, that I have been trying to get out there for people to use to talk about competitive Pokemon or just Pokemon in general. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, I'm hosting with my own money because I'm like, I'm sure that like the Patreon support I get will be enough to keep it up. And it is because I I essentially make, I make double from Patreon with the website costs. It's like 30 bucks on Patreon, 14 for the website. And I just figured, I'm like, all right, well, technically it's no money out of my pocket. Let's just do this. And awesome. I basically have been marketing it in my videos. I'm like, hey, guys, make sure you check out my forum. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, share it with other people. So that's basically the gist of the website. It's meant yeah. to just be a nice place to talk about VGC uh, and have some decent amount of moderation without it being overbearing. Yeah, dude, I was super excited about that once you announced it. And I'm glad that you did that. Uh, if you guys want to check out his website, the link will be in the description below. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Is there a sign up process? How do they what do they do? What do you do? Uh all you have to do is you go to the forums and if you want to make a post, it'll prompt you to uh, log in or make an account. And that's, that's it. It just takes two seconds. Oh, something also cool is you can follow other people. So you can go to your page, look at only posts from people you followed. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. So if you're looking at, uh, looking to uh, follow someone who's significantly better than you, maybe get some uh, insight or something like that, you can just choose to follow them and then uh, get your learn on. Yeah, I'm really hoping to add direct messages at some point, but that would be a long process. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, how many users you got? What's it What's it looking like? Are, uh, are you haven't seen some success with that? I there was a big surge at the beginning, uh, but I had to lay off of marketing it for a minute because I was working on some summer classes and stuff. Uh, yeah. Let me actually check right now how many users we have. I know it's not quite a hundred, but 
it's enough that we have posts every day. Uh, so if we go to forums, members, it looks like we are sitting at uh, 70 members. Dude, that's awesome. I guarantee you there's definitely going to be people uh, uh, in my Discord and in my viewers who are going to want to join. And I'll most certainly join myself. Yeah, something uh, I tried to that's do awesome. just to like prompt people to do it is I used to do question of the days in my videos. But rather yeah. than doing that, I like announce the question of the day in the video. And I'm like, but if you want to answer it, go to the forum. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. Um, so tell me about uh, you hosted a tournament recently. And I saw that... Uh, that you already announced the winner and everything like that. So what, what, uh, tell me about that. It was, uh, basically last summer I hosted my first tournament. I call it the Moxie boosted summer showdown. Yeah. And it was a free tournament to enter. There wasn't a prize. It was just meant to be, Hey, you know what? If you win, I'll, uh, share your team on my, on my videos and give you all the credit. Yeah. And, that's cool. Uh, I had, you know, a moderate amount of people join. I think I had maybe 12 or 13 or 14, somewhere around there. Right. And my buddy, uh, someone that would end up becoming a good friend of mine uh, named Big Slim on Twitter and Discord. And Shout outs to Big Slim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he won. And uh, ever since then, I've been talking to him. I actually met him at Dallas Regionals this year. And he's just a really cool dude. And I hosted tournaments every once in a while throughout the year. Uh, and now that I made this website, I'm like, all right, well, here's another way to make sure the website can stay online. I am going to host tournaments with an entry fee but there will be the majority of the money will go out as a cash prize and yeah. I'll keep a cut of it to put towards keeping the website online and or paying for upgraded bandwidth or something somewhere people can visit it. Yeah. Uh, but this time around, I decided not to take anything. I'm like, you know what? I feel like since it's the first tournament, I'd rather just give everything back. And uh, what ended up happening is we had a lot of people for a, you know, an entry, a cash entry uh, tournament uh, join. I had, 11 or 12 i think the price pool was like 44 dollars. so yeah. first place ended up getting uh 22 bucks second place ended up getting 12 and i think third place got like 8 80 or something um but yeah it was really fun i did it double elimination rather than round robin for the sake of time because yeah uh, it was late at night that i was hosting it because i worked <laughs> during the days yeah, yeah so yeah. It, it was fun uh uh dina i forget how to pronounce her last name dina ibrahim Mm -hmm. uh, ended up winning and she said it was a great time and uh, we're going to be doing a uh, team breakdown at some point for the website uh, after internets because she's going to be taking the winning team to internets dude that's awesome I look forward to seeing that video that I mean that's that's good dude I remember when I was on uh, active duty orders in San Antonio I was really big into the TCG and I won uh, I think there was three separate tournaments uh, two of them were held in the same day. Uh, one of them was for actual, like, uh, like one of them was actually official and one of them was like not. And then the, uh, uh, another weekend they would, they would have like tournaments on Sunday and like open play and stuff like that. So I won yeah. first, second and third and dude, we didn't win prize money. I mean, we won like, like first place would win like three packs. And at the time it was, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the TCG, but at the time it was roaring skies. So aside from, you know, Shaman EX and Mega Rayquaza and stuff like that, there wasn't really anything to win. So, dude, that that's awesome that there's, like, legit prize money and multiple entrants and stuff like that. There definitely wasn't 12 people entering in those tournaments. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. I was just excited that I could I, – I was, I was more so excited that I was actually hosting a, a tournament with a decent cash prize than the fact yeah. that people entered. I'm like, oh, my God. I can give yeah. people, I, I'm actually entering a tournament that people have an incentive to enter. Like, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. Have you ever, uh, so outside of VGC, have you ever like participated in any of the uh, Smogon tournaments or anything? Uh, I haven't participated in any Smogon tournaments. Uh, I do play a bit of Smogon, but I never really got what into, do you play? I, I play mostly UU because uh, I'm a big fan of using things that are kind of viable, but not quite. Yeah. So like, I use like a mega, I use a rock polished mega aggron team at the moment. Of course. Um, of course. It, Cause it's just like, it's got a 140 base attack yeah. and a decent speed tier where you can EV it to outspeed. Um, I think I'm EV to outspeed mega manectric. And then from there, oh I my can, God. yeah, like after a rock polish, it's a lot of speed and I had to go jolly nature. 
Uh, dude, but, your utility manectric is sick, dude. I keep, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I like bred, I, I bred two of them and then I forgot which ones they were and I didn't want to take the time to do it. So I genned two more and then I forgot them again. But I, uh, so I got like 20 manectrics now that are all support manectrics. I can't remember which one is which, but dude, the, you're, oh my God. Yes. Great. Just great. Props to you, dude. That's, that's a great, I love that manectric, dude. Thanks. And it, anyone that disagrees is clearly just a moron. Uh, you should have way more subscribers, Wolf, dude. Wolf Click disagreed with me on stream. He's like, uh. he, he said, like, I, I love Wolf Click, by the way. He said he didn't quite disagree. I just said, dude, I I love Manectric. Do you think it's gonna win any major tournaments anytime soon? He's like, Manectric's pretty all right, but I don't think it's that good. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Great. Well, never mind. I just put my foot in my mouth. Sorry, Wolfie. Love ya. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said that. Uh, anyway, uh, we've been going for about 40 minutes, man. You want to plug anything? As, as I mean, I can let you go. I got to get out of here soon. Uh, I, I have a YouTube channel. I have a yeah. website. I have a Twitter. Plug it all, man. Plug it all. What you got? Where can they find uh, you? Well, um, YouTube-wise, it's just Moxie Boosted. Uh, YouTube.com slash Moxie Boosted. Twitter, same thing. Twitter.com slash Moxie Boosted. And the website is just MoxieBoosted.com. Uh, I don't post as often as i used to because i used to just do general battling and stuff yeah. um but i try to put a little more personality into it at this point where i'm editing things uh, and i just talk about pokemon and uh do some not quite strategy guides i'll break down some teams once in a while but uh, i'll talk about uh how certain pokemon are used in formats and just general news i guess yeah your editing's good too it's funny oh thank you i like your videos yeah uh you got merch you just oh, yeah, just yeah. it's i don't i don't just plug my merch too much because i'm like talk hey, it all it, plug it all this is your time just it's shameless pretty much pretty much the merch it doesn't even allude to me too much because i i find it pretty awkward wearing a, a t-shirt for a youtuber so i pretty Oops. much made it <laughs> i made it pretty much i'm just like, i'm wearing my own merch right now <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what I, I, whatever man whatever marcos this will be the last interview we ever do fine ouch, ouch. <laughs> I, I no but i mean like i understand people wearing like youtuber merch but i i figured i would make something that's like it's something that you could wear without people asking like what is that yeah uh, so I, I put a general logo on it instead of moxie boosted it just says boosted uh yeah. and it's it, it's pretty much just my logo with moxie ripped off of it and uh sort of a tv color background on it it's i i haven't even ordered my own one but my buddies ordered some and i'm like why are you ordering my own merch andrew he's like it just looks nice <laughs> yeah dude that's cool dude doesn't uh, even play pokemon well anyway man thank you so much for the interview i'm gonna let you go uh do you have any closing thoughts final words for the viewers um eat your vegetables eat your vegetables go, okay go on go on runs every day uh kiss your bros good night uh, <laughs> uh i'm i'm gonna try to do a video with uh, mr danger boss at some point in the near future so hey I that's awesome man i appreciate you uh take the time out of your day to do this little interview uh guys if you like this video make sure to leave it a big thumbs up don't forget to go check out moxie boosted's channel uh buy some of the guys merch support him on patreon sign up for his website and all of this other stuff that we've talked about uh yeah don't forget to comment if you feel so inclined and subscribe the only way that you're going to be able to see new updates on when i drop my content or moxie boosted for that matter is if you turn the notification bell on i know it's a chore but literally if you don't click the bell and then go to settings and then notify me all the time you're probably not going to see my content or his content and i can't speak for myself but his content is really worth watching and you should uh give it a chance anyways without further ado that's it uh marcos thank you so much for the interview and uh Thanks you guys have been great i have been the danger moss i will see you next time bye